Hello YouTube, right, okay, um, this is a heat ray sadia boiler that I repurposed. Uh, you may remember last year I did many experiments trying to get hot water from excess solar. Uh, so this little, well, I think it's a 6 litre tank, although if you fill it right to the brim. Ooh, yes, uh, fill it right to the brim, then you get 7 litres, and this thing will boil on a good day. Now, excess solar, uh, what, what do I mean by that? I mean basically... This is set uh, with some gubbins over here, which I've pulled apart recently because uh, I uh, welded a relay shut. Basically, this this uh, will boil water, uh, and I've been using it to take every <laughs> available watt hour of electricity coming away from the sun. Uh, and I, I did have a stat in there for a little while, but I figured if I want to figure out how many sun hours, uh, 480 watts worth of solar panels. Uh, gets me, then I'll leave that out, leave the lid off, and let it boil. Uh, as the day goes on, it is not going to boil dry. The element is down here, so we're perfectly safe. Uh, however, this setup here uh, is <laughs> is really ropey. So, unfortunately, we're using a relay to switch a relay to switch a relay, because I never did actually figure out the time uh, constraints on this little device here. Uh, when this hits 28.2, uh, which is actually lying, this is 0.2 up, uh, then it should be so. When this is 28.2, when my battery is hit 28 volts, this switch is on, uh, which sends a signal to a timer. The timer runs for 200 seconds and switches on a bigger relay for that amount of time. These 30 amp automotive relays uh, are not actually up to the job, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have um, a welded couple of these. Uh, and once that's switched on, it sends the 24 volts through uh, to this uh, Banggood Special. I don't know what it's classed as. Apparently it's a 1500 watt step-up converter where we uh, transform the 24 volts to 90 volts. And from the 90 volts, it then goes out to the element. Uh, so, yeah, this is now... Um, the testing I've done this year proves that it works and it takes up all the slack. However, um, so six litres, six and a half litres of boiling hot water is not particularly that safe, so we need to upgrade this. So um, tank-wise, I'm going to show you what I've got. I'm going to repair it uh, and uh, see what the new element pulls on this system. So this is a 25-litre uh, direct hot water tank. has a ball valve in the top, uh, fills up with water, goes down to the bottom element, heats up, and then you draw it off from down here. However, this one, the element had failed, and uh, when we went to replace uh, said element, uh, the um, drain valve actually um, sheared off. Now, this drain valve must have been some sort of cast material, because uh, I had to use a hacksaw blade and cut it in several places to actually get it out uh, before getting hold of a new drain off valve this is if you want to perform maintenance on it where I can pop a new one in there some brute force was used to get the element out that goes in there however I can't see any damage on this element although it is pretty crusty uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to install a new element in here um, and see how it functions. If we get the camera inside here with this torch, with the bearing in mind the outlet is down there, you'll see that there is a copper pipe running up the back there, in between all of the corrosion, uh, and that's the outlet. So the outlet probably comes to about here. So in order for uh, you to get the, all of the hot water that is in the tank out, water needs to come in. So the water probably uh, goes down the tube to the bottom. So the weight of the water on the top will fill it up once you draw off some from the top. Uh, so you've never really got much of an air gap in there. So unfortunately, even if you do fill up this tank to the top uh, and fill it up every day, like I have been doing the small heat ray sadia to get hot water as a dump load, if I wanted to draw off 25 litres, I'm going to have to actually attach the uh, inlet to 
mains water or at least some sort of header water to allow the water to physically come out of the bottom. Although I could just drain valve, but that's just uh, fiddly. So let's go and have a look at the new element. So we'll be going up from a 2.4 kilowatt element to a 3 kilowatt element. Now on a low voltage system like this, and this is running at 90 volts DC, uh, we would actually see less current flow through this, which uh, is not really a bad thing. It just means the duty cycle of this system will be on longer if the sun is out more often. Um, this is not designed to actually drop the batteries below a um, safe voltage at all. That is done by the charge controller next to the batteries. However, uh, one day we'll be upgrading the system and losing this part here. And instead, we'll be uh, using this 24 volt to uh, 110 volt uh, inverter, uh, American voltage, uh, to do the job. And that will give us approximately, I think I worked out, 4 amps, 440 watts, flowing through a 3 kilowatt element. Um, I'll probably do some maths in the meantime, but let's, uh, let's get this together, mount it on the wall, ready for some testing. And hopefully in the meantime, the sun will come out and confirm at 90 volts how much power is gonna flow through this element. I just heard it click on and uh, we have a little bit of voltage sag down there, taking our batteries from 28.2 down to 26 volts. The time started counting and of course, uh, my, my display on this is wonky, so it goes out. The element is touch warm. Let's go to the shed. And there we go. Interestingly, the wattage is actually 300 watts, or shall we say 278 watts, which is still usable voltage. I might even transfer this over to the 110 volt inverter uh, straight away. So uh, as the sun's out, let's uh, check that. With it plugged into the 24 volt inverter, the voltage is 28 volts. Switch that on. Our sag is down to oh, 20 volt, 21 volt volts is it's having a hard time let's go and have a look in the shed quick and shut this off there we go we have 674 watts on here uh we are sagged down to 25 volts near enough with the full sun so uh let's shut this down quick uh yeah it's quite interesting once i have more batteries in here obviously this is just temporary setup once i have a uh, full power wall we will be able to sustain uh this 650 watts quite happily this uh, obviously we have our new element replacing the old um, this is pretty gammy so I'm gonna clean it up with some wire wall but I haven't got any cool stuff so it might take a little while just to scrub that up it's just one corner so you get the benefit yeah much cleaner here yeah, so we'll clean it up and then we'll uh, seal it so I've got that all nice and cleaned up in there now, so I'm just going to, uh, I actually can't remember whether you apply it to both sides of the washer or not, but I'm going to put some of this jointing compound, which I've always used, but I've never actually had a leak from doing this, so just put a bit around the outside, maybe a little bit much, oh well. I never actually put any of this on the threads. But then again, I'm not a plumber, so if I got this wrong, I'm sure someone will let me know. There we go. So with a little bit around the outside of the brass, we're going to drop the washer that comes supplied with the immersion heater on top. And drop this in it. Obviously I'm just being poor man because I haven't got my tripod here and I'll tighten that up off camera. Having cleaned up the drain, I'm just gonna use loads of plumbers mate on this. Or jointing compound because I actually have no luck with PTFE tape. However, this one I will use PTFE tape on, or Teflon tape, just to see if I use too much. 
or too little. So I'll tighten that up off camera. Right, just gonna fill it up and check it for leaks. You can see that corner past the ball bearer is where the water goes down. You can hear the tank filling up. I've got the feeling the weather's changing. Right, that's the obvious. That is the overflow if it fills up too far. Ball valve in, water out, fills up the head of the tank, goes down the hole. Uh, if it overfills, it actually comes back up here. I was trying to get it splash out. There we go. If it overfills, This video is not going to go the way that I thought it was. I've just reset uh, the load counter on the battery system. 27 volts is our starting voltage. So basically, I did not use any power last night because I was saving it just in case we had a big thunderstorm because it looked like the weather was changing and there was big storms up north. Anyway, so today um, we're going to see just how much power we can divert via that um, <laughs> via that scru the scruffy mess up in the uh, lean-to and we're actually going to transmit via a 2.5 millimeter squared flex uh, the 4 amps or thereabouts of 90 volts uh, giving us about 300 watts so let's um, go and have a look at the heater and then it's off to work so it's pretty early in the morning here here we go there's our 2.5 mil flex and it runs all the way up to the lean-to Right, so we put one. Right, so it's like seven o'clock. Uh, this probably hasn't worked in a couple of hours. We've put 1574 watts of excess power into the water tank, uh, and obviously it hasn't worked for a couple of hours. So we're going to see what the temperature is and see how much water comes out without adding any water into the header tank. Here goes nothing. This tank is now filling up the copper tank below. And we get about five, six litres out without topping up the header tank. So there is a, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, probably a copper tube going from the header tank down to the bottom of the tank and the weight of the water from the header tank is pushing the hot water which is at the top up and over and down into the tap or bowl or whatever outlet you have down the bottom. So we'll say six litres, and we're, what we we'll do is get the hose pipe on this and see if we we'll get any more out. Uh, right, okay, so the first uh, six litres or so is coming out at about 47.8 degrees, say 47 degrees. 48 degrees, right, okay, that's good. We'll get the hose on this. Right, so this tank is coming out now about 43.8 degrees, say 44 degrees, which is lovely, quite hot, warm water. This would be perfect for a, uh, a bath or a wash. But today we're going to be using this grubby water because I've put it in a dirty 35 litre tank uh, for washing down some things in the garden. And we'll retest this tomorrow, uh, tomorrow or another day when the weather is lovely and try and put a high amount of wattage uh, of wasted potential energy into this tank 
because I'm not going to get time to mount it now. Let's see how it goes. See if we can get this to 70 degrees. If that's 70 degrees, then dropping it down to 44 degrees for bar 40, you can have plenty of water. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, rate, and I'll see you in my next <laughs> rough video.